So what is going on guys and today I will be showing you how to color correct your videos in Premiere Pro and I just got a new mic so I hope it sounds much better this time. Last video I sounded so bland and boring. I tried to edit it as much as possible but it still sounded very bad. But anyway we're going to show you how to color correct your videos in Premiere Pro and yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video so let's get started. So before we start, we're actually going to need to go into your camera settings. There's a couple things that you can change to make this process a lot easier and a lot, and a lot more effective. So one of those is you need to shoot in log format. And what I mean by that is if you go inside your camera settings, there should be a format that says log. And what that basically is, is it just makes it your video look very flat. Like there's, there's no outstanding like highlights there's no color there's no contrast it, like it's just a flat state that you can make all the adjustments yourself and this can be like a really powerful tool if you know what you're doing so that's what i'm going to show you guys here to do today so the, here's an example of a log file if you look if you look at this video like this is a very colorful scene when i was there when i was in catalina island this video was so blue so green like there's just vivid colors but uh, in a flat profile, it looks very gray. There's no, you know, it, it doesn't stand out. And we're going to fix that because this can actually make it look a lot better. But another thing that you can change is I can't really do this in this camera because it's a DJI Phantom 3. It doesn't have the settings. But in most uh, DSLR cameras and some SLR cameras, they have what's called a raw format. What that basically is, it stores more information inside your files. And it, it gives you a lot more options for color correcting, uh, brightness, your contrast. It just makes things a lot easier and a lot more effective. So if you guys have that, I definitely recommend you enable that. It would make things a hundred times better. So anyway, uh, now let's get inside the Premiere Pro. So let's take this scene, for example. This is actually one of my favorite scenes of Catalina Island that I took it. Uh, let's start right here. So one thing that we're going to want to start with this, this, you have to start with this or else your whole process is going to be messed up. So you have to start with brightness and contrast. The reason why you have to start with that, because if we immediately go into the colors, you're not going to get a good idea of what the colors actually are, because you still have to do the contrast and the brightness. That's number one. You have to do that number one. So let's start with the contrast. This, this scene is already bright enough, so let's bring down the contrast a little bit. Let's bring it up a little bit. As you can see, it's already getting a lot nicer. So about 41 looks pretty good. Uh, let's play around with the brightness. L maybe a little bit brighter. And then let's actually up the contrast maybe a little bit more. And so you see it already looks a little bit more colorful. It uh, looks a lot more detailed. Actually, let me bring down the contrast. And so, yeah, it already looks much better. But so that's the first thing you need to do. Now, the second thing is you need, that you need to do is get out a three-way color corrector. Uh, you have two options actually. You can use the three-way color corrector or you can use the fast color corrector. Uh, they, they both do the same thing. The three-way color corrector has a little bit more room to play around with. It's a little bit more advanced. But um, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use it. So I, I recommend using that a little bit more. You have a little bit more room. So let's get the three-way color corrector. Alright, and it may look a little intimidating at first, but trust me, it's a lot, lot easier than it looks. So, so what these color wheels are is, first you have the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. The highlights are usually the bright and the brightness parts, like around this area right here, there's a lot of highlights. In the areas of the scenery, there's a lot of highlights. And the midtones are usually like your grounds or sometimes water. And then shadows, well, self-explanatory, they're the shadows inside the pictures. And why we have these color wheels is you can actually alter the color of those. So, like, let's say if I wanted the, the highlights a little bit pinkish, you can bring that up. It'll be pinkish, yellowish, and so on. You see how it's kind of changing as I move it around? And you can just alter that. I'm not going to play around with it. I feel like my camera did a good job in the colors. And I'm not really color grading, uh, which I may make a video about later explaining that. But that's mainly for movies and short films and stuff like that. So uh, so that's why we're not going to play around with these wheels right now. But for other videos and like color grading that you need color grading, these are perfect for that. 
And you see how I'm messing around with the mid midtones right now. You can make them a little bit reddish to get more of a warmer color and temperature. Like if you want to exaggerate like how hot it is or something like that. This is a great way of doing that. Or how cold it is. You may want to make it a little bit bluer. But like I said, for a casual video like I'm doing right now, you probably won't want to use these. And then the same goes for the shadows. So let's reset those. Okay, here we go. Input levels and output levels. So in shorter terms, what the input level does is it really just makes it a little bit darker because as you can see, if I drag this, hold on, it's not letting me drag it. Okay, if you drag this, it gets darker, the picture. So um, depending on your contrast, sometimes you'll, you will need a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, and this is what these are for. So let's make the, the input level just a little bit darker, just very little. And then the output level makes the scene brighter. So we, I don't need to play with the output level right now, but depending on your picture, you may need it, you may not. And now total range definition, uh, here's what you're gonna wanna do, okay? So first of all, let's go back to these color wheels. Let's make your shadows very, very saturated right now. And look, you see how it highlights all the shadows red. And what you're gonna wanna do is don't worry, it's not gonna look like this the entire video, you'll see what I'm gonna do. The midtones, let's just make this any color. You can make these any colors you want. This is just for your visibility. And then it highlights very yellow. So as you can see right here, it, it shows you where all the highlights are. Right here, all the yellows are highlights. Uh, all the reds are the shadows. And then all the blues are the midtones. So here's what we're gonna do with the total range definition. You're, we're gonna wanna mix it. So let's just blend it a little bit in. So just play around with these squares and triangles <laughs> until we mix them. There we go, that looks pretty mixed. So then you're just gonna wanna press this reset button right here on all of these. And now they're kinda mixed in. It may not look like there is a big difference involved, but trust me, it's gonna, it's gonna make a better difference when we get into the saturation. Now these are more advanced things. We don't need to worry about these right now. So let's just go into saturation for right now. Okay. For me personally, I, I really like to have my, my videos very saturated, very colorful, very punching, like in your face. So what I usually do is I, I bring this up to about 200. Depending on uh, what you want for your saturation, it might be different. That's your master saturation. So it's gonna bring up all your highlights, midtones, and shadows to, to 200%. But if you want a little bit more in your shadows, you can bring this up to 200%. I, to, uh, I actually like to recommend keeping it below 100 because you don't want a lot of saturation in your uh, shadows or else it won't look as natural. So let's just bring the shadow a little, a little bit down. And then midtones. This is probably one of the most uh, that you're gonna actually bring up out of all, all these. You're gonna wanna bring these up to about 200 also. The reason for that is because your midtones are like your grounds, your ocean, so you want those to be very uh, vibrant. And then highlight saturation, you don't really need to. You could leave this at 100. If you go too much, you know, it don't, won't make a big difference because highlights are white. So it's like, you don't need it. So let's bring that back to 100. And as you can see, it already looks much better. Let's let's show you how, what it looked like. Look, this is what it looked like before. Look how bad it looked before. But now that we have all of this, it looks so much more saturated, so much more vibrant, much more character to it. Uh, now let's just do the touch-ups. So let's go back to the brightness and contrast a little bit. Maybe we want to bring down the, the brightness or bring it up. That looks about better. And then maybe bring up the, the contrast a little bit. As you can see, we made a very, very good looking picture right here. And yeah. So here's a little something extra if you guys want to edit um, maybe movies or something like that. Uh, we can use these one second. This is a paid program, but I did find a way to get it for free If I can find that video again, I will link it in the description, but it's called magic bullet looks Maybe you guys heard of it and it does a lot of good things like This thing is a very powerful tool. I use this a lot when I when people hire me for video edits um, this is good for music videos and it it adds like a lot of good care and a lot of good color grading. Like here's Pelham. It it looks like very cinematic. Miami Gain, Chrono Steel. 
it just makes a big difference. And these aren't for casual videos. Again, these are more for short films and music videos, stuff like that, where you want like um, over the top colors, maybe. So that's usually what these are used for. I'll link it down in the description if you guys want to check it out. I'm not going to go too into depth. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to make more tutorials, I definitely hope I will. And please leave a like, comment, maybe subscribe. I'll link this video that I made, the full entire video, um, in, in the description if you guys want to check out how it came out. And anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.